on this cold, bright April Sunday morning. Possibly the largest field of marathon runners ever to be assembled for a single race, ready themselves for their long trek through the streets of the capital city. A journey over the legendary marathon distance of 26 miles, 385 yards, in which no less than 85,000 wanted to take part, and 22,000 were accepted. As they gather in Greenwich Park, late arrivals are still being registered, and the famous prepare alongside the people who run for fun. Men and women from all over Great Britain, indeed from every part of the world. Now, one of the attractions of the London Marathon course is that it passes some of London's most famous landmarks. There are two starts on either side of Blackheath Common, the blue start being for the top athletes in both the men's and the women's races this year. The red start is for the veterans and the virgins, as the first-time marathon runners are now known. And the courses come together where the red and blue lines join at about three miles. This is the first real tourist attraction, the famous tea clipper Cutty Sark and the runners make a slight detour around the historic ship uh, before rejoining the main road. The Cuddy Sark is just beyond six miles, and then the course takes them onto Surrey Docks, where they enter after about nine miles and leave at 11. It's a straight run then to Tower Bridge, and the thought as they cross the Thames, they're almost halfway. The distance to Tower Bridge is 12 and a half miles. The next loop leads through West India Docks to the Isle of Dogs, and then it's back towards the tower and the run through St. Catherine's Dock, where the historic ship's collection include Discovery, in which uh, Scott made his famous voyage to the Antarctic. Also in the dock, the latest arrival, Godspeed, a full-scale replica of one of the earliest Atlantic ships and built in 1606. The 22-mile marker is nearby, and after passing the Tower of London, it's on towards the centre of the capital itself. The embankment with the Thames alongside leads at 24 miles to Northumberland Avenue. Then through the edge of Trafalgar Square with Admiralty Arch leading to the wide open spaces of the Mall and Buckingham Palace beckoning in the distance. Just beyond the palace they enter the final mile of the race, a long birdcage walk. Then they go past Big Ben and just yards later, the finish on Westminster Bridge. One or two of the athletes appear to be taken by surprise, but the pancake uh, man has gone off very quickly indeed. If it's the same man that uh, we saw last year, his name is Dale Lyon. He comes from the Midlands, and he's trying to break the pancake tossing record in America. Meanwhile, these are the class athletes, and of course, this year, they're running for considerable prize money. And a special prize money as well, a considerable prize, if they can break uh, the world record. Set yesterday by Lopez of Portugal, the Olympic champion, in Rotterdam, in two hours, 11, uh, two hours, seven minutes, 11 seconds. Alastair Hutton is number 30. And the red shorts. And actually, they've gone off very, very steadily. They ran the first mile last year in an approximate 4.40. Uh, they don't want to get jammed in that enormous pack of runners, but they also must be careful not to start too quickly. Meanwhile, they're streaming through there. That's still the elite uh, group of starters, uh, stretching back across Blackheath Common, and now coming back onto the road, a mass of athletes. It, uh, it really, if there are elite runners in that pack, they're certainly being slowed down. There is a discipline to the start, and uh, look, they've absolutely uh, almost come to a halt, jogging through the gates. These are more of the fun runners, of course, but this 
is a sanitary uh, lesson. The clowns are there as we knew they would be. It's pretty cold out there. Although there's bright sunshine, it's pretty cold. Some of them covered themselves early on because there's been a lot of standing around. But the euphoria of the London Marathon is already there. The streets are lined. They know they'll be cheered and helped on their way. And uh, a lot of them filled with apprehension before the start. But they know a lot of people have made it, and that's helping them through the race. The organisers have, have been dreading the fact that they one day may get a hot day. And two days ago, there was some fear when the temperatures uh, soared up to the high 60s. That would have been a problem. It would have been a problem for the fun runners. But the temperature has dropped, the sun is out. It will cool them off pretty quickly unless they can keep bo uh, generating body heat. But it's a safe day for a London Marathon and everyone is relieved at that. Well, now you can see how the two courses come together. Uh, coming uh, from the top of the picture, those are the uh, vets and the virgins. And coming from the uh, left, the elite athletes. Now, as they join here, they run down on either side of the dual carriageway uh, to an island. Uh, the fast men go around the outside of the island, uh, the slower people on the inside. This is carefully measured, so they're running exactly the same distance. And about half a mile down that road, uh, the barriers disappear and the two packs join. And these athletes be well advised to take on board liquid. This is the first feeding station after two and a half miles. And of course, Brendan, the more liquid you can get on board earlier, the better. Hello, Mum. There's one of the great uh, regular entrants, uh, Jimmy Savile, who's running this year for the disabled which is the specially named charity for the 1985 marathon. Uh, Jimmy has got a way of knocking out marathons uh, week by week by week, which is quite amazing. And he'll have a band with him all the way. What a tremendous character. The uh, amount of money that he's raised for charity is astronomic. It makes the Guinness Book of Records. Uh, and not just in the London Marathon. His whole life is dedicated to that. And there'll be a whole bunch with him that'll cheer him on his way. And he's got a hand phone with him and it's, at, it's possible to make contact with him on the course. Not only does he go around and chat to all the London policemen on the route, but he's, uh, if anybody wants to talk to him, he's on the phone at the moment. combination this has become of carnival and intense competition here you see the joy the festivity of the occasion and meanwhile up front the intense battle is going on for the title that's back at the 11 mile mark a Jamaica Road just about a, a mile from Tarbridge Bridge looking fairly uh, quiet but meanwhile underneath they're going through having been around the Isle of Dogs they pass underneath Tarbridge there 
and uh, past Traitor's Gate in the Tower of London. Put your hand on the shoulder of the person in front of you and make a crocodile. That's it. Strongly. The parties continue alongside the route as they will now throughout the day. And once again, the weather has been kind to the London Marathon.